Hello everyone. Today, I will be discussing why systemic racism in the criminal justice system needs to be addressed. Racism has been an infamous staple in society since the very birth of the United States, but has failed to be addressed by the beneficiaries of its existence. Systemic racism has become an ingrained part of the criminal justice system, with origins dating back to the 1700s with slavery. African Americans have been perennially targeted by the recent increase of mass incarcerations caused by the war on drugs. In fact, data shows the racial disparities occurring in the criminal justice system, with the sentencing project recording that black people are incarcerated at a rate of 1,240 people per 100,000, while white people are incarcerated at a rate of 261 per 100,000. Despite this discrepancy, major changes have yet to be made to tackle systemic racism, although it is evident that something must be done to drastically alter the structure of prison and criminal justice systems. Systemic racism has been present in society historically, but is seen excessively in the criminal justice system. Thomas J. Nolan, a former federal prosecutor and graduate at Loyola Law School, Black people should constitute 12.1% of drug users per race because drug use is about the same for each race. However, 35% of people arrested for drug possession are black. 55% of people convicted for drug possession are black. And 74% of people who go to prison for drug possession are black. Additionally, according to Justin M. Smith, lawyer and graduate of Washington and Lee Law, slave uprisings, black population growth, and residential integration were not met with formal mechanisms from the government, but instead was controlled by legislatures. This graph from the Hamilton Project shows how despite drug use being similar between races, black people are incarcerated at a much higher rate than white people. Additionally, prison and criminal justice system structures are currently formatted so that minorities are severely disadvantaged in life, with poverty and lack of family presence having dire effects on minority communities. Michael D. Tanner, researcher of health and welfare at the Cato Institute, recognizes that the large amount of poverty in minority communities is induced by the racist structure of the criminal justice system. Tanner mentions that a study by scholars at Villanova University concluded that mass incarcerations raise poverty in the United States by 20%. Another study found that a family's probability of being poor is 40% greater if the father is incarcerated. Prison systems harm the equity of minority children as rates of parental incarceration are two to seven times greater for African American and Hispanic children an African-American child whose father does not have a high school diploma faces 50 to 50 odds that the father will be imprisoned by the child's 14th birthday. With the negative effects of systemic racism reaching a pinnacle in recent history, it is evident that something must be done to combat this issue. The Sentencing Project, a nonprofit organization that advocates for social justice and equal rights, suggests that the war on drugs has been inefficient and a promoter of systemic racism, with there being requirements for lengthy prison terms for drug offenses when alternatives would be more suitable. As a result, many minorities have been excessively punished for minor drug offenses, which has been a facilitator in mass incarcerations and excess convictions. Another possible solution is also suggested by the sentencing project, who argues that long prison sentences have actually been shown to have diminishing returns on public safety. Reducing the racial injustice in the war on drugs and removing minimum prison sentences for minor offenses would push for a criminal justice system that is more equitable and just. It can be argued that prison enforces the beneficial effects of resilience, as convicts can obtain the qualities of perseverance and teamwork as they endure the struggles of the prison experience. Nelson Mandela, 
former president of South Africa and anti-apartheid activist, argues that the authorities' greatest mistake was keeping us together. For together, our determination was reinforced. We supported each other and gained strength from each other. Whatever we learned, we shared. And by sharing, we multiplied whatever courage we had individually. Nelson Mandela's experiences show that resilience can be a possible outcome of life in prison and can actually turn someone's life around. However, it cannot be ignored that resilience can come with many adverse effects and has many examples of being harmful to ex-convicts. According to Tomas Chamorro Music and Derek Lusk, researchers at the Harvard Business Review, when resilience is taken to the extreme, it can get in the way of leadership and by extension, team and organizational effectiveness. This connection to the stimulus shows that resilience must be shown to survive prison mentally, which may lead to potentially detrimental effects on one's leadership and organizational skills. Additionally, according to Simmons University, those released from prison are expected to be rearrested once again, as within three years, 67% of ex-convicts are rearrested, and within five years, 76.6% are rearrested. With most ex-offenders of the law being returned to prison in such a short amount of time, it is evident that the negative consequences of resilience often take place amongst ex-prisoners. Systemic racism has affected the political, social, and psychological standpoints of minorities, and has clearly been a significant part of the criminal justice system. Racism in the criminal justice system is likely to be heavily fueled by police corruption. According to Sanja Kutinjak Ipkovic, researcher at the School of Criminal Justice at Michigan State University. Although some may suggest that resilience is a key outcome of prison life, it is actually likely that many convicts develop the adverse effects of resilience as they are in prison, such as leadership and organizational flaws. It is obvious, obvious and urgent that something must be done to combat systemic racism. Suggestions such as government action, police reform, reduction of mass incarceration, and less protection of prosecutors with absolute immunity could push the United States towards an equal and just future. Thanks, Theo. That was really well done. I got a couple of questions for you. So uh, for the first one, you know, this can be a controversial topic. So how did you approach and synthesize the different perspectives on either side of this issue to come to your conclusion? So the main part of my different perspectives was included in the counter argument when I discussed how resilience can actually be developed in prison. Originally, my counter argument was going to be about how maybe systemic racism doesn't exist, but I found that to be a ridiculous claim, so I didn't even include it in my paper. And I synthesized this with my argument by completely rebuting it in the next section of my paper. Excellent, excellent. And then as a follow-up to that, what additional questions emerged from your research that you would like, if you were to delve into this thing again, what question would you ask me? Yeah, so one of the main things I really want to know more about is if the government does take action and introduces police reform and um, tries to get rid of systemic racism in the criminal justice system, how would this affect society? Because a lot of people oppose that. A lot of people think that police are properly trained and what they do is good for the country, for complete art. So I really would like to know how, what the implications are on society in the United States as a 